I never thought I'd see a car that drives itself better than a Tesla. But here in Europe, this might be it. And no, the regulators are not the only ones to blame, but more on that later. Meet the Zeker 7X, built by the same company developing next-generation Waymos. It drives with 11 cameras plus radar, technology Tesla famously ditched years ago. And on these European roads, it often outdrives autopilot. But it's not magic. We will judge Zeker's autonomous abilities against Tesla Autopilot in six important categories based on our real-world testing and see who gets the most points at the finish line. We drove the car through back roads and city streets in truly ridiculous weather and what I learned surprised me. This system is ahead of Tesla Autopilot in the toughest situations and yet behind where it matters the most, the basics. One thing has become crystal clear. If Tesla doesn't want to lose Europe to Chinese automakers, they need to step up their game fast. And by the end of this video, you'll see exactly what I mean. The first and arguably most significant advantage of the Zeker ADAS system is that all of its features are standard on every car. You get adaptive cruise control with auto steer, which is the only part that Tesla offers for free as their autopilot, but then you also get automatic lane changes on highways and fully automatic parking. These features are already locked behind a paywall on a Tesla, specifically the almost 4,000 euro enhanced autopilot package. But how well do they actually work here? Let's start with the basics. You activate the system the same way you would with autopilot, by double pressing the stalk. But did you notice anything strange? Yeah, me too. There's absolutely no sound cue when activating or deactivating this ADAS system which for me is a pretty confusing and potentially dangerous design choice. Is it on or is it off? I'm sorry, but slight visual changes don't quite cut it. Makes you wonder if the engineers ever actually drove the car. Let's call that round one, safety and user feedback. Honestly, it's a clear miss here for Zeker. Tesla takes the first point. The philosophy here seems to be cooperative driving, but that's a dangerously vague line to walk. When you and the car are cooperating, it's not always clear who's actually in charge. That split second of confusion is where accidents happen. Speaking of which, if you want to see me test more non-Tesla brands to find out who really rules the road in Europe, hit the like button. If you think Tesla is the only car that matters here, hit dislike. Go on, let the algorithm know what you want to see next. Thankfully, just like in a Tesla, you can disengage by tapping the brakes or nudging the steering wheel. But be ready for a workout. The Zeker fights you for control like you're arm wrestling a polite but very stubborn robot. So just like with autopilot, I just recommend tapping the brake instead. But where the Zeker stumbles on the basics, it absolutely flies in other areas. The actual smoothness of the ride is on another level, but how does that translate to the chaotic reality of European backroads? It's just never as jerky as autopilot tends to be, no matter the speed limit. Here you can see us driving at a really slow speed, and even though Zeker doesn't slow down further for a speed bump, the ride remains comfortable through the village and beyond. It can handle some subtle road curvature as well and stay in the middle of the lane. And here, it almost looks like it had enough intelligence to actually slow down for another speed bump. Or maybe it just saw that speed limit sign right before it, which is also something I feel like it does a bit better than Tesla. But what surprised me the most was how well it handled these medians or traffic islands, whatever the proper way to call them is. It was quite nerve wracking, but the driver was relaxed and let the smooth criminal do its thing. Unfortunately, that smoothness disappears the moment you show it a real European curve. This is where Autopilot, especially with its new curvature assist, leaves the Zeker in the dust. The Zeker just gives up, even on gentle bends that are nowhere near the regulatory limit. For round two, navigating curves, Tesla's experience shows. That's another point for Team Elon. But don't count the newcomer out just yet. I have some clips that will blow your mind. These are situations where regular autopilot would either slam on the brakes and have a panic attack or just drive dangerously close to the obstacle. 
After disengaging for a speed bump, we re-engage the Zeker autopilot, but a car ahead noses in a little too far for comfort. Even though we could just continue forward, the Zeker is extra cautious and plots an alternative route around the car, just to be safe. I really like that little maneuver, because I never experience anything like this with Tesla Autopilot. And while the Zeker still gets a little cozy sometimes, its ability to navigate around things is next level. So for round 3, obstacle avoidance, Zeker puts its first point on the board. And speaking of being ahead of the curve, if you want to be the absolute first to see my tests when full self-driving finally gets the green light in Europe, consider becoming a channel member. You'll get early access to all my new videos, plus custom badges and emojis to stand out in the comments. Just click the join button below. Alright, let's leave the back rows behind and hit the highway. This is where we uncover Zeker's secret weapon, and also its most embarrassing flaw. And trust me, you won't see it coming. On the highway, you get all the features of Tesla's enhanced autopilot for free. It follows navigation for on-ramps and off-ramps and can perform automatic lane changes. And this is where things get interesting. You signal, the car checks its surroundings and it just goes instantly. The maneuver itself is much faster and way more confident than a Tesla. And you can just go back and forth lane to lane. For round 4, highway confidence, the point goes to Zeker. And just like that, we have a tie. So what's the catch? Well, you have to keep your hands on the wheel for the entire duration of the maneuver. With Tesla, you can technically let go once the change begins. But the Zeker's capacitive sensor demands your touch the whole time. It's much more assertive, but also more demanding. It works by sensing the natural electrical capacitance in your skin, which is why a gentle touch is all it takes. It's more advanced, more expensive technology than the simple torque sensor Tesla still uses. And frankly, it's just better for this use case. But can it handle the one thing that drives every European Tesla owner crazy? What about phantom braking? We drove for over an hour in some pretty gnarly conditions, and not once did it flinch. That alone is a massive win, and one of the main reasons I'm confident in saying that this car really does drive itself better than a Tesla, even when the conditions get truly apocalyptic. But before we get to that cinematic downpour, let's talk about the cherry on top, Auto Park. So how does Zeker handle parking? Well, the first thing you'll notice is an incredibly annoying quirk. You have to come to a complete stop before you can even select a parking spot. Tesla lets you do this while slowly rolling, which feels natural. Zeker's approach is clunky and unintuitive here. Once you're stopped and have a spot selected, you get this geeky little display showing the remaining distance for each part of the maneuver, which is pretty cool. It's not scared by pedestrians walking past, and the overall performance is familiar, if a little slower than Tesla's Auto Park. And same as Auto Park, it finishes just a little too far from the curb because there's an obstacle behind it. It's so similar to Tesla's system here, you have to wonder, have you been copying the homework, Zeker? Let me know what you think in the comments. Is this clever engineering or is it blatant plagiarism? Because if they did copy it, they didn't copy it perfectly. The system is far less flexible than Tesla's. It tends to give up mid-maneuver if things aren't going exactly to plan. Tesla's auto park isn't perfect either, but it's reliable enough to make the enhanced autopilot package feel worth at least some money. This is the embarrassing flaw I was talking about. So for round 5, auto park, Tesla's flexibility gives it the edge. The point goes to Tesla. So if auto park was the flaw, what on earth is the secret weapon? We find it in our trial by fire. Blinding sun on a highway so wet you could probably surf on it. My own stress level was through the roof, but the car, well, just watch. The driver merged manually because we didn't know if autopilot could be turned on in those conditions, but then he pulled down twice on the stock and we were absolutely shocked by what followed. The performance didn't degrade at all. It handled the water, the sun, and the heavy traffic on a slick highway like a seasoned professional. When I first used Tesla Autopilot, I thought stop and go traffic would be its perfect use case. I was wrong. Tesla lurches forward eagerly, only to slam on the brakes, as if it's constantly surprised by the car that was right in front of it the whole time. Zeker 
is much closer to FSD level performance here, with buttery smooth accelerating and braking. It even confidently negotiated merging traffic while staying assertive and, most importantly, delivered a comfortable, stress-free ride. For our final round 6, Grace Under Pressure, the point goes decisively to Zeker. So the final score is a tie. But that's the most shocking part of this entire video. A Chinese automaker just went 6 rounds with the famous Tesla Autopilot and didn't lose. That tells you everything you need to know. For a day-to-day -day assisted driving in Europe, I have to admit it. This free standard system is more helpful and pleasant to use than even Tesla's paid enhanced autopilot package. And for a sort of a Tesla channel, that's a pretty sad thing to say. We all know what Tesla is capable of. The technology is here. With FSD's approval in Europe jumping from months away to potentially years away, it's time for Tesla to deploy a plan B. And this plan would help them even if FSD got approved absolutely everywhere tomorrow. So what's the plan? Simple. Make the standard free autopilot massively better. Make it smooth. Make it intelligent. It doesn't need to handle city streets. Leave that for the paid FSD package. But it is completely unacceptable for any other automaker to have a better highway assistance system than Tesla. Today, in regions without FSD, that gap has closed. And in many cases, Tesla is now behind. Even in the US, the vast majority of Tesla drivers will never buy or subscribe to FSD. Their only experience is with the jerky, unreliable, basic autopilot, which poisons their perception of what the car can really do. We know FSD is a world apart, but it's Tesla's job to prove that and the best way to do it is to make the free system so good, so intelligent, that it leaves no doubt about who is the king of AI on the road. But don't take my word for it. Check out this video where I tried driving through Prague on Tesla Autopilot. It was rough. But it's a perfect comparison to what you've just seen with Zeker. So go ahead, click the video in the middle of your screen and I'll see you there.